Hey there, Jacqueline with The Fable Tree here. This week, I'm showing you five different ways to add special touches to wrapped gifts using your Glowforge. Now you can use this for gifts for your own family and friends. You can also sell these to your customers. And in fact, if you have a file shop, you can sell the files too. Uh, so really versatile here, whether you've got a Glowforge business, a files business, or you're just creating for personal use only. All right, so let's get started. For our first um, design, it's going to be a simple cutout letter. So I'm just going to use the letter M and you can use whatever font you like, but I like Glamour Absolute for this one. And I'm just going to use the regular one. I'm not going to do any glyphs or anything fancy here. You can make it whatever size you like. I'm just uh, blowing it up to make it easier to see. And then I'm going to uh, right click create outlines. Okay, at this point, we need a way to hang it. Right. Um, so I'm assuming that my customers or myself that I'll use some really thin twine. But uh, if you're planning on using ribbon instead, make your hole a little bit bigger. So I'm going to start off with a quarter inch by quarter inch circle. All right. And then I'm going to come up and click object path offset path. And then I'm going to do a negative 0.07 offset. I'm going to go ahead and just change this to miter simply because that's what I generally use. Um, and then you can zoom in, so select both uh, Command Plus on a Mac or Control Plus on a PC should work. And since we added that offset last, um, it should be on top. So we can just select both of those, come over to the Pathfinder panel, and click to minus front. If you don't have that Pathfinder panel, it should be under Window Pathfinder, and it'll pop up for you. Okay, now I'm not going to use this circle. I'm actually going to copy and paste it because I'm going to use the same circle over and over and over again. All right, now um, I'm going to center this on my M. And in fact, I'm gonna make my M a little smaller so it all looks nice and proportional. All right, I don't have a specific gift in mind for this particular tag, so I can just use it wherever it applies. So I'm gonna zoom way in, um, place it where it looks right. And in fact, you can use your smart guide and it shows you that it's nice and centered here. So if that looks nice to you, go for it. You do wanna pay attention to how close or how far it is because take a look, if I were to, uh, use my Pathfinder Unite right here, it would work, but this part would be really weak and it might break really easily. So I like to have a little sturdiness to my uh, my pieces, and so I'm going to make it, um, that attachment part, a lot bigger, which makes my whole piece more robust. When you've got your placement where you want it, um, and you can even use that align tool if it makes you happy here, but mine, I just use my smart guides, you can click to Unite. Go ahead and change it from a fill to a stroke, and you have your first piece. Okay. I could see that being really cute on a minimalistic wrapping with some twine and just one simple initial to indicate who it's for. Okay, for our next one, we're going to do the word Mary. Now, obviously, you could do whatever name or word you wanted to, but this is one that has wide appeal for this time of the year, so that's what we, we're doing. I'm going to choose a script font uh, so that it's all attached and I don't have to worry about anything there. Come up and use my selection tool, shift, hold down shift, click and drag to resize proportionally. OK, and again, I'm just going to make it large enough for me to see easily. I'm not really worrying about the final size just yet. OK, now I really like that font. It looks lovely for me. So I'm going to go ahead and right click to create my outlines. You will see that uh, if you zoom in, uh, you've got all these little overlapping bits and you need to use the Pathfinder panel to unite those together or else the Glowforge will cut all of your letters really messed up <laughs> and you don't want that. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and make another copy of my um, twine hole. I don't know if that's got a real name, but there, <laughs> that's what I'm calling it. So Command C, Command V on a Mac or Control C, Control V on a PC. And we're going to do the same basic thing that we did with the letter, just with the whole word. Now, you could, of course, if you decided to put it on the top instead of on the side. I'm just trying to give you some extra options. Now, what I notice is that these little bits here are quite thin, and I am a little bit nervous about um, how uh, thin that might be and how sturdy it might be. So before I unite it with my, um, again, we're calling it a twine hole. <laughs> With my twine hole, I'm going to go ahead and add an offset path. So click it, object path, offset path. In this case, we don't want a negative one because that would inset it. We want a little positive one. And I think I'm going to try 0.02. And yes, that looks good. It does look a little thin and, or a little thick and chunky right now. But remember that when the laser cuts out, it removes a tiny bit of material as it does so. So I think I'm going to be just fine. Now, if you click uh, and drag so that both 
your original wording and your offset path are selected, you can just come over to Pathfinder, unite that, um, and then it just becomes one, one path. You don't have anything weird, and I'll switch to a stroke to show you that. Okay, cool. So let's move it back to a fill for now, and we're going to attach our fine hole, and whoa. Do you see how when you use the vertical align center, it includes the tail of this Y and it doesn't really look good at all, right? That, that is technically centered, but not visually centered. I'm a big fan of visually centering things, okay? I'd rather it look right than be right, if that makes sense. But um, you get to make whatever choices you want. So I'm going to pretty much center it right in the middle of that M hole. I'm gonna scooch it over so it doesn't have, um, I don't know if you noticed this, but let's zoom in so you can see the edge of this M is cutting through my circle. All right. And I don't want that in this case, although it might be OK in some time, some cases. OK, so once you've got your placement of your twine hole all set, you can select both of these Pathfinder Unite, change it from a stroke a uh, fill to a stroke and you have your second piece now. Once you have it here, you can come over and take a look at your dimensions in your properties panel. So this is about three and a half inches long, about an inch, a little over an inch tall. That's fine for me. You could also do if you wanted it to be four inches long or what have you. Just make sure that when you're adjusting size, you have this little this little chain uh, enabled or clicked, selected. OK, now um, what that does is it helps maintain the width and height proportion so that when you change the width, for example, to four inches, the height stays proportional and it doesn't get all stretched out and distorted. All right, so we have our first two designs already. And look how easy that was. Okay, let's see what we can do next. So um, we're gonna do words again. So I'm going to do, let's see here, ba la la, and I'm not going to do it in cursive, although you absolutely could. I'm going to use wild mango font. This is one of my uh, favorite fonts. I really like that style, the similar to um, the Glamour Absolute and all of those kinds. So I like, I have several different, slightly different versions of this and I love them all. All right, so we're going to do two versions of this one. We'll do an engraved one and a cutout one. Uh, so it's really uh, easy to change from one to the other. So make your text, select your font, choose the size, and then right click, create your outlines. Okay, now I think that is a good size to be getting started with. And so at this point, you can come up to object, path, offset path, it's a, it's a really handy tool. And in this case, I'm going to do a whole quarter of an inch offset. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so I actually like that size pretty well. I'm gonna go maybe 0.275, okay. But I don't like all the like, here, let's, oh, I can't zoom in. Let me zoom in closer so that you can just see it. Um, so 0.275. I don't like how clunky and strange this part looks. And that's because I have the miter join. If you instead come to the round join, it looks a lot nicer. Okay, so I'm gonna do that one. Before you click on anything, right now, all that's selected is just that new offset. And so you can go ahead and click your Pathfinder, Unite, and then go switch that from a fill to a stroke. And you can see that here we have a cut line around the edge and some engraved letters. Beautiful, except of course we need a twine hole. So let's copy paste a twine hole. I'm really regretting not looking up that proper term before <laughs> before I started this. Um, and here's another one where it doesn't look precisely perfect if it's technically um, centered. And so I'm just going to put it where it makes sense to me. And you can do the same thing if you want. Okay, so sorry, I, I, sometimes it takes me a minute to um, zoom to the perfect spot uh, to let me put it exactly how I want it to be. All right, and so I'm gonna scooch it down a little and in a little, and then once you have um, your twine hole situated where you want it, you can copy, uh, click and drag to select both of those. But what you might notice is that it's also selecting these letters. So let's click off for a second, click around this outer thing here, the outer the offset path, go to object ungroup, and that's going to separate um, our letters, unfortunately, it separates the letters from each other as well, um, but you can go ahead and just click and drag to select all of those object, group them back, just saves you trouble later. Um, and now you've got your out, your offset path separate from the words, which is what we want, because right now we're going to use the Pathfinder panel to merge or to unite just the twine hole and um, the offset. OK, so do that and you'll see it fills it all in. Go back, change it to a stroke. And right here, you have a really beautiful engraved um, tag. 
All right, now I told you we were also going to do a cutout version instead of just engraved. So just go ahead and copy and paste that entire thing. Okay, uh, and now click just the words and we're going to copy paste that as well. We're gonna bring it down here, change it to a stroke, but look, it seems like there are some really, really thin spots that make me just a little bit nervous. So let's go ahead, uh-oh, we don't need that. <laughs> let's go here, object path, offset path, and we're going to thicken it up, not that much. How about a 0.02? That looks better to me, okay? And so once you're happy with the thickness, go ahead and select it. Um, both both layers, unite it so that that uh, orig your original letters go away and you just have your offset remaining. You can, and I will before I cut this, um, ungroup these and scooch them all together, but you don't need to watch me do that. Now, since we thickened it over here, theoretically, you don't need to put a, a negative offset here, but I'm going to do it anyway um, because I just, I like it. I like to be absolutely certain that my scored placement lines will not show. All right. Now, is this step strictly necessary? Couldn't you just delete these letters and just kind of freehand where that goes? Sure. But I'm terrible at eyeballing things, and a lot of you are, too. So let me show you how I get around that. Object path, offset path again. Are you sick of offset paths yet? Um, I'm not. I think that they're lovely. <laughs> but here we go. And I'm going to do a negative 0.02 offset and OK. And before I click off of it or click anything else, I'm going to come right up here, change it to a green color because that's what I use for scoring and then swap my fill and stroke so that um, it is a scored outline instead of an engrave. Before I do anything else, I'm going to copy. So command C on a Mac, control C on a PC or, of course, the edit copy here. And I'm actually going to just delete it. I'm going to do the same thing with these. Click delete. Do not copy. Don't don't copy it, OK, because you need to keep what was copied before and then edit paste in place. OK, so now you have scored placement lines on a cutout back backing. You have cut out letters and you're good to go. I say you're good to go, but this little bit here is really going to bother me. So I'm going to zoom all the way into this. I'm going to select this weird little random spot. I'm going to use the direct select tool to do this and just get rid of whatever that one little stray point is. And I see it on my other L as well. OK. You need the direct select tool instead of the select tool, because if you use the regular select, it would it would select that whole letter. We don't want that. OK, so just zoom in and or, or take a look and make sure that there isn't anything else that is strange that might mess, mess you up. OK, now two more. Whew, we're getting there. Let's start with a rectangle shape. And I've made some tags before in previous videos. So if you don't like the shape of the tag that I'm making right now, that's fine. Just go back and find the one from a couple of weeks ago when I did um, a more traditional tag shape. In this case, I'm going to make uh, a rectangle. You can eyeball it. So it doesn't really particularly matter what uh, shape you come up with. And then round the corners by clicking on the dial and just dragging it. Okay, you can make it a full oval, you can make it almost super pointy or somewhere in between. I like maybe a hmm, like a quarter inch. All right. So we have uh oh, it's in our score color. Let's just go ahead and fix that before we move on. Um, and now we want to add another little rectangle here on top. And don't worry about if it's centered, don't worry about if it's the right size, anything, just put a rectangle and you can make it as rounded as looks good to you. It won't be a quarter inch rounding like on the other one because it would just disappear in that case. So, all right, once you've got two shapes you like pretty well, go ahead and select them both. Use your align panel to horizontally align them in uh, centered. And if you don't have that, you can go to object align, horizontal align center. Okay. Uh, an important thing to pay attention to, let me zoom in so I can show you, is that you want to move this down enough that the start of this curve is below the line. Okay, because otherwise it'll kind of scooch in and then out, and I don't think that looks nice. So you want it to be straight down, and we are at a good spot. Okay, and actually I'm going to just kind of move that in a little more and then realign it. Cool. When you like that, go ahead and you can even do one more and move it up a bit, make it smaller, adjust it. Basically you're stacking it to make a, a tag shape. Okay, again, make sure that your curve is below the horizontal line. Horizontally align, center them all. And when you're happy, you can um, Pathfinder Unite. We are going to, of course, use our lovely um, twine hole that we already created. So we are saving ourselves time. And on this one, I'm actually okay if this um, 
uh, circle gets cut off a little bit. I think it looks fine um, and even a bit more traditional if it does that. But you get to make your own decisions about what things look like. So I'm okay with a cutoff circle in this, this case. Um, and we have a nice little sort of ornament inspired tag. Now I'm going to go ahead over to the properties panel, rotate this 90 degrees. Okay, you can also do that by going to object transform rotate. And we're going to do again, two versions here, um, but I'll just, or you can do two versions here. Um, I'm gonna put a name. And I'm going to use Kindred font this time because I think it looks really cute for um, the style. And here we go. It doesn't have to be quite that big if you don't want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and right click, create my outlines. And here's the thing that I want to show you here. Um, if I want to center this, and I do, let's just look and see what happens when I try to cent horizontal align center it. OK, it centers it, including all of this part, which visually throws it way off. OK, so I'm going to undo that because that looks terrible. <laughs> and if you want it to be centered within just this part, you can do that. What you'll do is just create a new rectangle and take it from edge to edge. OK, go to your select tool, click off somewhere and then just click and drag to select the, the words underneath and the rectangle on top and then horizontal align center that. Now you're not done because you'll see that it moved the rectangle over. So it's no longer from edge to edge. So scooch it back, scooch both things um, selected at the same time back. And now you can delete that. And it is centered horizontal, uh, yeah, centered horizontally just on this rectangle part. Uh, you don't have to do that when you center it vertically because you don't have any weird asymmetrical things this direction. So there you go. Okay, and now you can use that same technique from before to do a cut out version if you would like but you also don't have to it's up to you okay okay we have one last design i'm going to move this up and out of the way um, we're going to make a long skinny rectangle to begin with and i'm going to have it let's make it half an inch tall okay and that's a good length to start with we can adjust that later if we want to I'm going to create a triangle. Basically, we're making an arrow shape, but we have to build it. So we're going to click and hold on the rectangle tool and come down to the polygon tool. It doesn't really matter what size it starts out with. You just want your triangle uh, to be there. So make sure it said three sides and not five or something else. And you're going to just move it until it is, um, in this case, 330 degrees. You just want this, this edge to be straight up and down. OK. And we know that we made this rectangle half an inch tall. So we want this triangle now that it is rotated, we want it to be half an inch tall as well. OK, and you can drag it over until it intersects. And just kind of click off to make sure it looks right. And once it does, once it looks right, select both of those and Pathfinder Unite it. Now for the other end, it gets a little bit more complicated. They're not too bad. We're going to do um, the same triangle. Okay, and again, it doesn't particularly matter at this point what size it is. Click, drag it up sort of into place and rotate it until you've got one of the ends um, nice and straight. And actually, that's not the right one. We want it to be flat. So we want this to kind of merge into that really nicely. OK, so uh, in this case, 300 degrees. Now, you don't have to rotate it. You can come over and type in 300 degrees right there. It's up to you. Um, and then we know that this uh, rectangle or this rectangle with the triangle attached to it already is half an inch tall. So we want this to be half of that. So 0.25. OK, so 0.25 inches tall. And we're going to copy it, paste it. And use this flip vertically button. OK, you can also get there through object transform. OK, and then once you have that, we just want to have it aligned with the top and then halfway, exactly halfway through. Um, and sometimes it takes a little time to kind of mess with it to make sure that once you merge it, it'll look really nice. But I, let's just give it a try and see what works. OK, this looks hopeful, but we'll, we'll pay attention. Yeah. OK, cool. So now um, if yours did not look as beautiful as mine did right off the bat, don't worry. The first time I made this, I had to try three different times. So just scoot your triangles a little. Make sure that they're perfectly aligned with everything that they need to be perfectly aligned with, and it should work. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and just um, swap the fill and stroke, take a little look. And I do want to use my twine hole or add a twine hole, but I don't want it to be the whole big, you know, circle, um, outer circle, inner, inner circle thing. So instead, I'm going to swap the fill and stroke here, zoom in super close, use my direct select tool, and just get that inner hole. Okay. And now copy and then just leave it alone. Don't do anything up there. Come over here and you can paste. And of course, now we have to move it. <laughs> so move it and you can put it wherever looks right to you. But then I do recommend that you vertically center it. OK, so I like that pretty well. You can write whatever message you want on here. I'm going to just do, uh, you know, a general Merry Christmas. That's a cute font, but I'm not using this one. I'm going to use Glamour Absolute oh, or Wild Mango. Hmm. <laughs> Let's do Wild Mango. And I'm going to make it larger. I'm going to make as large, basically as large as it will fit. Um, and you want it to really look, uh-oh, make sure that you are holding down shift and not caps lock like I just did, um, because you want it to resize proportionally, of course. And then you can eyeball it or you can do the same rectangle trick I showed you earlier and um, center it that way. Once you've got your words how you like it, just go ahead and right click, create outlines, and you have a fifth beautiful design that would look really lovely on a Christmas gift. I'm going to scooch it over because it's not quite right. There we go. Okay, and I will go ahead and just vertically align center that, and it just scooched up a bit. If you are really industrious, you could then do cutout versions as well, but I honestly don't want to glue down that many letters, so I'm not going to. <laughs> OK, so at this point, I uh, hope that you will either make your own versions. Of course, I think that's the best. Make your own versions of these. Tag me at the Fable Tree on Instagram or share with me via email um, your versions. I would love to share those and see them and see what you do. Um, and I'm including some of these designs for free for you in the resources vault on the fabletree.com. So I'll put the link to um, access the resources vault in the comments. I'm sorry, in the description. So you can click there. You'll have to join my email newsletter, but I just, I, you know, I send out a newsletter once a week with tutorials and sometimes free files and all sorts of goodies. I don't just, you know, spam you with, hey, I have a course. So, uh, you know, I think people people are generally happy to be on my email list, but that's how you get access to the resources vault. And you'll have uh, some of these designs there as well as uh, some really exciting other designs and a couple of work uh, worksheets for your business as well. All right. So make sure that you go ahead and hit subscribe. Sign up for my email list. Get into that resources vault. Send me a message if you have any trouble at all. And again, please, please, please share your pictures with me. All right. That's all for this week. See you next time.